welcome to this week's edition of France in Focus. I'm Haxi Myers Belkin. It won't have escaped your attention that France is currently experiencing a wave of social unrest sparked by a planned increase in fuel tax. Today we're going to be taking a look at the often fraught relationship the French have with their tax man. movement that sent ripples across France in recent weeks began with the government's planned eco-tax on fuel, but quickly expanded to include wider concerns about the cost of living and what many see as an unfair tax system. But is their anger justified? Here are some key figures on how France manages the public purse. The French often bemoan the amount of taxes they pay. However, less than half pay income tax. In 2017, 43% of households were taxed, compared to 52% in 2013. In 2016, 70% of income tax was paid by just 10% of taxpayers. In other words, households earning more than 50,000 euros a year. There are many different duties in France. VAT amounted to 200 billion euros in 2017. Business taxes totaled 65 billion, Land tax added up to 40 billion. Taxes on donations, inheritance, and property sales reached 35 billion, and council tax 22 billion. These tax revenues currently make up 48.4% of France's GDP, compared to 40.5% in Germany, which is the European average, and 23.5% in Ireland, the lowest rate in the EU. Two levies in particular overburden businesses, in France, taxes on production stand at 16.4%. Social welfare contributions are at 18.8%. Figures that make business advocates grit their teeth, but that are for others the price to pay for efficient public services. In both rural and underprivileged urban areas in France, there's growing frustration at what many people believe is a system that simply doesn't work for them. People are paying their taxes, but at the same time, they're seeing public services like transport and healthcare being rolled back. We meet some of those who feel the state has abandoned them. Chateau Thierry in the heart of rural France. In this town of some 15,000 people, we meet two treasury officers. They say residents have been fed up with excessive taxes for years. Are you surprised by the recent protests? Not at all. There's been growing anger for months and months, if not for years. It's more of a social fracture and a territorial divide than a problem of willingness to pay. Let me be very clear, people don't mind paying taxes as long as they're getting public services in return. Small business owners too have been complaining. On this busy shopping street, Chris Desprez, a baker, says he can't pay any more taxes. Today, I can only afford to have two apprentices. I can't hire a salesperson, let alone another baker, or even a pastry chef. Is it because it's too expensive? Yeah, when you pay a salary to your employee, you end up paying just as much in taxes. It's not just taxes that are too high. Some people feel that everyday life has become too expensive. So this is where you live now? My partner and I couldn't afford to drive to work every day, so we came here, and we're only five kilometers away now. Did you move because of gas prices? Yes, we did. We were spending over 200 euros a month on gas. Cindy and her partner earn 1,500 euros between the two of them. They also receive state benefits. Has that helped you at all? Yes, I'm not going to lie, but just because the state is giving with one hand doesn't mean it should take with the other. Beyond anger about high taxes, many people say they feel abandoned by the state. It's the case here in the Eure department, just a two-hour drive from Paris. Here in rural areas, public services are 30 or 40 kilometers away. Christophe Delorme, a security guard, takes us around his hometown. So this is the old post office. 
What's in this building now? Nothing. There's a small apartment there, but the rest of the building is empty. It's not just the post office that was shut. This maternity ward will soon close its doors, as will the local tax collection centre. You can pay your taxes online. So why do you need to come here? Well, you know, old people like us, we need a place like this. They should have kept it open. Here, high visibility jackets are proudly on display. The yellow vest protests have struck a chord. Residents are asking for fewer taxes and more public services. Public services are paid for by taxes. Yes, but the government is taking them away from us. We have to drive long distances to go to the post office or to a tax collection centre. They're telling us that our taxes will help improve public services, but for whom? They're telling us that we can just walk or cycle, but we don't even have public transport here. We need local public services. Better and more evenly distributed services, that's what the yellow vests want. They say it's a matter of equality. depth look now at France's relationship to its tax system. We're going to meet Alexis Speer. He's a sociologist and a tax expert. Alexis Speer, thank you very much for talking to us today about France's relationship to tax. Do you think that people would be more willing to pay their taxes if there was a little more transparency? I think it's about more than just transparency. The issue of economic inequality and tax injustice is what's really at the heart of this current movement. France's tax system is very complicated, with many loopholes and exemptions. It's an opaque system that makes it hard to see who pays what. So you mentioned the sense of injustice felt by people who've been protesting in France in recent weeks. They feel that this eco-tax on fuel is directly targeting them. But there are other taxes that these same people are actually exempt from. Yes, that's true. In France, we tend to think that the tax system is mainly based on income tax and that many households are exempt. But income tax only generates a quarter of all tax revenue in France. Goods and services taxes affect everyone regardless of income. These are the taxes that weigh heavily on the working class. And that's why these taxes have sparked feelings of injustice and outrage for the yellow vests. And why do you think it is the working class who are disproportionately affected by indirect taxes? In France, the term working class can refer to industrial workers, employees and small business owners. These people are often the most affected by service taxes. But many of these taxes go by unnoticed. That changed with the gas tax. The initial protesters were people with cars who drive and fill up their tanks every day. So they immediately felt the effects. It's easy to see how much the price per liter has gone up, and because it's it's easy to see the price difference. This tax has been capable of sparking widespread anger. But there are many other service taxes in France that generate much more revenue. The VAT accounts for half of France's tax revenue. Now, for the rest of the world, France certainly has a reputation for high taxes, for high public spending. Is this reputation warranted, do you think? Yes, it's true that France has high tax rates, the highest in Europe and one of the highest in the world. Tax revenue in France represents roughly 46% of GDP. But you have to keep in mind that at least 20% of this revenue is used to fund and subsidize public services, like Social Security and health care. In other countries, these expenses are covered by employers or the private sector. So if you take this into account, French people aren't necessarily paying more for these services than people in other countries. And as I explain in my book, French people are very attached to our welfare system, which adds a layer of complexity to the current movement. 
On the one hand, people are attached to the system, but on the other hand, they want less taxes. It's particularly difficult to resolve this equation of a feeling of tax too high and at the same time, an attachment very strong to the public service and an attachment very strong to the social model model. Now, in your book, you argue that you can feel both disdain towards the tax system and attachment towards the state. There are certainly some people who think that the recent uh, Yellow Vest movement here in France is led by simply a bunch of anarchists. What do you think about it? I think it's difficult to define the Yellow Vests politically. It's a diverse movement spread all across the country, and at times it incorporates seemingly contradictory political beliefs. There is a strong tradition in France of anarchist and labor movements. People protest and strike often. There is far less union negotiations than in Northern Europe, for example. So this historical context is important. But what's different about the Yellow Vest movement is that it's brought together people from various socioeconomic backgrounds, and not all of these people share the same goals. The gas tax is what unites all Yellow Vests, but if you take a closer look at all of the different factions, you see they often have different and even at times contradictory demands. So it will be difficult for the Yellow Vest to elect representatives and agree on a common policy platform. There are small business workers, employers, employees, artisans, factory workers, welfare recipients and the unemployed. All of these groups have different interests and demands. A lot of stuff to get our teeth into Alexis Speer, sociologist and author of Resistance to Tax, Attachment to State. Thank you very much for speaking to us here on France 24. And that brings us to the end of this week's edition of France in Focus. Thank you very much for watching. You can, of course, catch this show again and many other shows on our website, france24.com. Yeah, really fascinating. Thank you so much.